Videos in this series have covered monosaccharides. Now let's finish with di, oligo, and polysaccharides. Let's start with disaccharides. The most famous disaccharide is sucrose. How many monosaccharide constituents in sucrose? Well, there are two. So it's a disaccharide. You can see the nomenclature here. It's a D-glucose bound by an alpha anima to a fructose in the two position, an unusual one, two linkage to fructose, actually. So the glucose is the anomeric donor. It donates the anomeric carbon. And the fructose is the receptor. Although confusingly, that's also an anomeric carbon. The second most important disaccharide is lactose. And the third most important disaccharide is maltose, but by a distant second and third to sucrose. Sucrose, sugar, is particularly bad for your teeth because that uniquely is hydrolyzed by an enzyme in bacteria, and that bacteria produces a sticky polysaccharide that glues to the enamel, and the bacteria can live there and begin tooth decay. Lactose is a dimer of galactose, the anomeric donor, and glucose. It's found in 2-4% to 4 of milk. It's mildly sweet. Milk has a little bit of a sweet taste. Asian people, 70% of them, can't digest lactose very well. They're lactose intolerant. And not all Caucasian people can digest it well at all. About 30% of Caucasians cannot. Maltose is a dimer of glucose. When starch is broken down by amylase, it gives disaccharides of galactose and glucose. That's maltose. Maltose is about 30% as sweet as sugar. If you ever tasted maltose sugar, it's, it doesn't have the same sweetness as sucrose. It was incidentally discovered by an Irish brewer making beer. Maltose is found in germinating seeds. Just a bit of a revision. Does fructose contain a ketal, a hemiketal, an acetal, or a hemiacetal? It contains a hemiketal. It's a ketose, therefore. And in sucrose, that fructose is attached to glucose. Fructose is actually about one and a half times as sweet as glucose is. So when sucrase hydrolyzes sucrose, we get glucose and even more sweet, fructose. Fructose is found in fruits, remember? So those are probably the most important disaccharides. Let's look at oligosaccharides. Now, the definition of oligosaccharides is a bit arbitrary, but we can consider it about three to ten monosaccharides put together. And there's none so particularly important in introductory organic chemistry that you should remember them. Just remember what they do. Let's start with eukaryotic cells. The cell membrane is a jungle. This is a simplified diagram here. And in that jungle grow proteins, glycoproteins, which point oligosaccharides to the surface. And also glycolipids, where a lipid, a hydrophobic molecule, is anchored to an oligosaccharide. And thirdly, there's another class of proteins which are actually outside the membrane, anchored by what's called a GPI linkage. There's about 121 of those encoded in your body. They're GPI-linked proteins, and they also may be glycosylated. So it looks as though the main function of these oligosaccharides is cell-cell recognition. And one example of that is blood types in human serum. Type A, type B, type AB... Type O are defined by the composition of the oligosaccharides on the cell surface. Polysaccharides are anything bigger than about 
10, 11, 12 monosaccharides put together, and they can be thousands of monosaccharides in a chain, they really have two main functions. The first one is for energy storage. So when plants photosynthesize and they want to put energy in the bank, they store it as starch. Starch is the combination of amylopectin, which is a branched polysaccharide comprising totally of glucose, and of amylose, which is a linear polyglucose polysaccharide. So the plant is packing glucose in these more condensed form and storing it away for when it needs it. But of course, if animals or we eat plants, we take in that starch and we hydrolyze it. Cellulose is another polysaccharide, and it's a linear chain of glucose again. And these linear chains of glucose, if there's no amylopectin in the way, they can stack nicely. They give a stiff fibrous material that plants use to comprise cell wall. Okay, let's say I eat that potato, I take in the starch. I've got to package it myself in a way that my body can store it away. And the way to do that is, first of all, hydrolyze it, cut it down into probably disaccharides, maybe monosaccharides, but get the glucose out of there particularly, and then the glucose is repackaged in glucogen, which looks a lot like starch, actually, but the branches in the polymer chain are closest together. It's more compact. So glycogen is made in the liver, and then any excess is converted to adipose tissue, fat. And that fat or that glycogen is eventually hydrolyzed or burned back to glucose to maintain the blood glucose level that the body requires. So the difference between amylopectin and glycogen then is glycogen is branched at shorter intervals, it's more compact, it's a tighter form of energy storage that we as mammals use. Just as cellulose is used for structural features in plants, chitin is a similar polysaccharide used for insect exoskeletons. Chitin is a polymer of N-acetylglucosamine. So just a bit of revision, very quickly. Sucrose, is it an acetal? or a ketal? It's both. Is it a di, a ligo, or a polysaccharide? It's a disaccharide. How many carbohydrate units does it have? Two, of course, it's a disaccharide. Cellulose, is that an acetal or a ketal? It's not a hemiacetal, except on the end. It's a polyacetal. Cellulose, is it found in plant or animal cell walls? Plant cell walls. Is cellulose a mono, a di, a ligo, or polysaccharide? It's a polysaccharide. Is cellulose a branched or a linear polymer? It's all in one chain. It's a linear polymer. But it packs chain atop chain to give it that structural strength. Amylopectin. What's the key glycosidic linkages there? They're all acetals between glucose. Is amylopectin a branched or a linear polymer? Branched. Is amylopectin found in starch or glycogen? Starch. And what's amylopectin used for in plants? Energy storage. What's glycogen used for in animals? Energy storage. So with a good understanding of what monosaccharides are, di, oligo, and polysaccharide chemistry is mostly descriptive, except for maybe the nomenclature for denoting how they're joined together. And it's quite intuitive, really. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.